Hey guys, I am constantly asked which of my five 3D printers is my favorite. I have a TiVo Tornado, I have a CR10, I have a CR10S, I have a Fogletech FT5, and I have the Ultimaker 2 Plus. And I'm gonna tell you why that Ultimaker 2 Plus is my favorite of the bunch. Hey guys, welcome to Where Nerdy Is Cool. My name is Paul. This is where we cover all topics that I consider nerdy and cool. So welcome. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the button over there in the corner, hit the bell so you get the notification. I don't want you to miss any of my videos. And if you're a regular visitor, you're already a subscriber, thanks, welcome back. So yeah, so we're gonna talk about why the Ultimaker 2 Plus is my favorite printer of the bunch here. You would think that you know, it's the most expensive printer I have. I have four other printers that cost less than $700. You'd think I'd be screaming to the, to the top of the rafters here about how awesome they are for the value. But I gotta tell you, the, the Ultramaker 2 Plus has really been my go-to printer for quite some time now. So let me give you some background on that and well, here we go. Okay, so let me give you some background on the Ultimaker experience that I've had. So in 2013, I bought my first 3D printer. I bought the Ultimaker original kit and uh, I received it and the instructions were superb, the CAD drawings, everything else. Um, their support site, I mean, if you had questions, you could go to the forum, you could put in a support ticket. I mean, it was a really great experience putting that printer together, learning how everything went together, uh, you know, getting everything fine-tuned, and as I went, if I had questions, there was a support team right there if I needed them, uh, plus the web form from other Ultimaker owners. Uh, so that, you know, that was how I started there. And then, of course, as I mentioned, uh, as I got a couple years into the Ultimaker original, as I wanted to do some things that the original couldn't do as well, that's when I purchased the Ultimaker 2, got it from Fabricate as I refurb, did the upgrade, and, and there you go. So as you can see, my first two printers have been Ultimakers, and th that's been part of my experience, and it's probably why I'm so fond of them. But it gets better. Let me tell you something that was really cool. So in 2016, when they were gonna release the Ultimaker 3, I got an email from Ultimaker saying, hey, you know, you're very active on our support site, you're very active on our forum. Uh, we're gonna be uh, revealing this new printer in New York City uh, in the middle of October. Would you be interested in coming down to come see this? Sure. Great, we'll, we'll fly you down and you'll, you'll stay for two days and then uh, you'll get to see the brand new Ultimaker 3. Wow, I mean, who's gonna say no to that, you know? And I wasn't a YouTuber back then. I didn't have any kind of celeb status like some of these guys have. So it was a huge honor to get to go down to Brooklyn for the opening uh, or the uh, unveiling of the Ultimaker 3. It was fun to, and it, it's kind of funny in hindsight now because back then I wasn't big into YouTube, but now when I look back at it, there were so many people that I met back then that are very active YouTubers. And had I known I was meeting YouTube stars back then, wow. But anyway, so it was interesting to, you know, to meet a lot of people that were very active in 3D printing, obviously in a, you know, in a big city like New York City. And I think the best part was after the event, while we were kind of unwinding and all chatting, I had an, an opportunity to talk to the CTO, uh, Chief Technical Officer, also the co-founder of Ultimaker. And I, mean, I don't want to pronounce his name wrong, but uh, I think it's Cert or Cert. But uh, he was talking about all the trials and tribulations that they had gone through to get the Ultimaker 3 done. They talked about all the ways they were working on active leveling. They were talking about the ways they made the print cores work. They were talking about the support material. I, you know, it was like having an, well, it was. I had an inside glimpse into what these guys were going through to you know, not only meet, but exceed their customers' needs. And uh, it was, to me, it just blew me away. I mean, it was fascinating to hear from, you know, this, you know, co-founder and, you know, chief technical officer of Ultimaker to find out all the things that they were doing to make their printers, you know, really, really solid, to make them great, and to make it so that the customers didn't have to worry about knowing the guts of a 3D printer. Their goal was to make a device where the printer would take care of itself, you just, feed it the ecosystem of Ultimaker materials, you use Cura, and you do what you wanna do, you make your designs, and the printer's job is just to print it with awesome results. 
And I'm a customer service guy. I, I've been in the retail customer service. I've been an IT guy for 25 years. So I know all about making people happy, especially when they're not very happy and, and you know, what have you. But it just, it made a really great impression on me to know that these guys and their company were really striving for that customer experience. So big respect to them for that. Okay, so I know what you guys are thinking. You guys are going, Paul, that's fantastic, but you're talking about a $2,500 printer and a lot of us are making the best of our three, four, five hundred dollar printers. You know, why in the world are you talking about a printer that, you know, so many of us just can't afford? Well, <laughs> it can be done. I pinched my pennies for a long time before I got hold of my Ultimaker. I mean, I'm like a lot of you guys. I, well, I don't have a lot of sponsorship. I don't have any, I just have me. <laughs> but I mean, I don't have a big toy budget. I don't have a big 3D printer budget to do some of these things. But I can tell you that for the money, the Ultimaker certainly makes it all worthwhile. I mean, let's take a look at a couple of things. So, and let's be really honest here, okay? So if we're talking about our TiVo Tornado, CR10s, ANETs, and other printers, most of these printers, when we receive them, we have to calibrate them, we have to tune them, we have to print upgrades for them. Uh, and then in some cases, we have to you know, try to find out what's going on. So we have to figure out what's going on with stepper drivers, uh, salmon, skin, you know, salmon skin, ring a bell with anybody. Uh, you know, so I guess the biggest point I wanna to make to you guys is that, you know, yes, the printers are more expensive, but what is your time worth, okay? So if you're looking at getting a whole fleet of you know, CR10s and stuff like that, they're all gonna require a, a fair amount of tuning and calibration and you know, what have you to make them print reliably. This guy, you take it out of the box, you plug it in, you go into your slicer, you know, especially if it's, you know, a cure, which is built for the Ultimaker, and off you go. It just prints, prints, prints. So it just depends on, you know, what your time and, you know, and money. So for a business, for example, I, when I was at that conference, uh, where they had the big reveal for the Ultimaker 3, there were a lot of people there that literally had farms for all these Ultimaker 2s, and they were telling me how they can't wait to get into the dual materials and the support material and stuff like that with the Ultimaker 3. And then it just really hit me that, wow, I mean, that's, I mean, here I am, you know, I'm a hobbyist here, and I'm struggling to make a BB-8 dome and a BB-8, you know, body panels and stuff like that. These guys are doing a lot of advanced prototyping, they're filling orders for customers, so, it's definitely, you know, you know, a much different market. You know, the Ultimaker 2, Ultimaker 3, and the Ultimaker S5 certainly aren't aimed for, you know, those of us that are, you know, have a basement shop here and we're printing out props. But if we can get hold of the money or if we can get the funding to get these printers, we can certainly get some amazing results because we don't have to kind of reinvent the wheel, tuning and calibrating a machine. The machine is all set to go. Make any sense? Okay, so we're talking about money, which is always awkward because everyone has their own budgets. You know, some people can put it on the credit card and get whatever they want. Some of us have to save for a little while because we just don't have that toy money. So there's a couple of other ways that you can get hold of these printers for a little bit less than retail. And I don't, I don't say that to take business away from the retail guys, but uh, for example, I mentioned Fabricate. They sell refurbished Ultimaker printers. And if you keep an eye on their webpage, every now and then a couple of them, you know, show up and they're available. Uh, I, last time I looked, there were some Ultimaker 3s that were available. I think they were out of twos at the last time I looked, but you know, that's one place you can go to check. And of course, there's the usual suspects. I mean, you can go to eBay or Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or whatever marketplace du jour is popular in your region of the country uh, or the world, I guess. And I would just caution you, like any, anything else, if you buy online, you definitely want to make sure that you know the buyer is telling you the truth and stuff like that, and hopefully they're going to pack it safely. Uh, a good question to ask would be how many hours are on the printer. The printer has the ability to tell you how many there are. The reason I mentioned the used route is even if Fabricate doesn't have them, and if you can get them secondhand from someone else, say someone upgrading to an Ultimaker 3 or, or something else, uh, you can get these. And they're really solid little machines, but you know what? If you're buying an Ultimaker, and you probably bought an Ultimaker because you, you don't want to mess with the guts of these inexpensive printers. And if you're a little wary about getting inside the guts of your Ultimaker, Fabricate is also, well, they also do warranty work. So they also do the maintenance and the out of warranty work as well too. So what I'm saying is that if you do get hold of one that's used and you're not sure about it, you could certainly contact Fabricate and say, 
you know, I just bought one of these. It has a lot of miles on it. And, you know, what would it cost to have you guys, you know, give it a tune up? I mean, you can't do that with any of these other printers that I have down here. N none of these Chinese ones, it's, it's, n no way. You know, this is no way. So that's a really nice feature right there. So if you're in the Ultimaker ecosystem there, you know, dealing with Fabricate and, and so on, if you do want to do those upgrades, those can be done for you. Another point that's worth mentioning is that Cura is built for the Ultimaker. I mean, if you go into Cura and you tell it you have an Ultimaker 2 Plus, for example, like I do, boom, your default profiles are all right there. If you're buying Ultimaker filament, say I have Ultimaker polycarbonate, I can load that up and it's going to tell me already all the ideal settings from retraction to cooling to temperature. All that work is done for me. So unlike, for example, if I want to print, you know, say, you know, PETG in the CR10, I can look around on Facebook, ask people what they've used for settings, and I can do some experimentation back and forth. And, you know, I may or may not have a couple failed prints before I get a good one. Whereas with Cura and the Ultimaker, all that work has been done for you. They have already gone through and created profiles for the materials they offer. So that's a nice perk to have. Another thing worth mentioning is the hot end on the Ultimaker 2 Plus. You don't have to worry about changing out a whole bunch of stuff to use different filaments. Uh, it is built to work with PLA, ABS, you know, for example, if you want to do polycarbonate or some other materials, they're all supported. So you don't have to worry about, you know, reinventing the wheel, taking the hot end apart or upgrading it to something else. It's going to work. So that's a nice feature as well. All right. So that's why the Ultimaker 2 is really kind of my go-to printer. Um, was this a review? Maybe? Kinda? Sort of? I don't know. But I just wanted to share with you guys, because a number of you have asked, because that is why it's my go-to printer. It's just so little drama. I mean, I don't have to worry about stepper motors. I don't have to worry about, as I mentioned, the electronics or other stuff. The Ultimaker is built from quality stuff. It's well supported. Um, I mean, if you have questions, as I mentioned earlier with my UMO, uh, the Ultimaker original build, I mean, there is support from Ultimaker. I mean, with these guys, with the TiVo Tornado, uh, the CR10, and the other printers over here, where do you go for help there? You, you wind up going to a Facebook group, and you know, uh, the Facebook groups are good, but if you're trying to find an answer, well, sometimes you know, you gotta really scroll, scroll, scroll. The search feature is okay, but point in, the point I wanna make is that there is not a central website that the manufacturer offers offering direct support to their customers. The, the goal of some of these other ones is just make it as cheaply as possible, get it out, and then make the next model. So that's, that's the difference right there. So what do you think? Do you have an Ultimaker? Do you have another make model printer that just prints everything out really, really great and doesn't cause a lot of headache? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd be really curious to see you know, what your experience is, what make model printers you have, and well, just how does it work for you? All right, guys, I thank you guys for watching. I just want to remind you that you can find me on Facebook, where Nerdy is Cool, on Instagram, where Nerdy is Cool, and my website is where nerdyiscool.com. I tend to post things often on social media so you can see what I'm working on, so be sure to check that out. If you wish to support me and my channel and my efforts over here, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash where Nerdy is Cool. And that's our video for this time. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up if you think I did a good job. Give me a thumbs down if, well, you just want to be that guy. So anyway, until next time, remember, this is where nerdy is cool.